Hey guys, it's Jasmine. And originally this was going to be one long video, but that was just out of hand. It was way too long. So this is part three of three covering all of the fragrances that are made by Fleur. So let's just pick up where we left off with the last video. And don't worry, I'm going to link all three videos that cover all of the fragrances that the House of Fleur does create and make. I'll put links to all those videos with all the reviews in the description below. Next one we're going to talk about is Greylock. Give it a little spritz. Remind myself. Mm. So I would put Greylock and Olmsted and Vaux under similar categories uh, in terms of that kind of more fresh masculine vibe. At first spray, this makes me feel like I'm locked in a cedar tree bark chest. Let me tell you guys in notes, sea salt, bergamot, birch leaf, silver vetiver, and pine resin. So that makes sense. I feel like whoever wears this maybe lives in the northwest of the United States, maybe like Washington State, Big Sur, Northern California. He might wear a smoker's jacket, like his, his morning mug of English hot tea with a splash of whiskey. Did you see the picture? I mean, very accurate again. It reminds me of changing leaves, of autumn weather. I can picture the person who wears this to be in his early 50s, early, late 50s, has taken good care of himself, kind of a stoic energy about him, a kind temperament. Maybe he is at the tail end of his career as a successful architect. That's what I get from this. Again, just like the last one, who's confident, but in a, a quiet way and, and not pretentious at all. This one definitely gets more complex and interesting as it develops, that woodiness does not go away. I think that comes from the pine resin, the birch leaf. Where I said uh, Heptat might be a younger Nick Offerman, I definitely think that this would be current age or even older <laughs> Nick Offerman. But it's it's comforting. It's not piercing. It's earthy. It's woody. But you get that kind of like going on a drive down the coastline, that sea salt air. There's a distinguished flavor to this. And it's not that I don't think a man who's younger than his early 50s would wear this, but that's just who I picture when I smell this. I absolutely think that a younger person could pull this off. And I can see how this might develop very differently on different people. The longevity on this was decent as well. It was over, I believe I had it over seven to eight hours, which is very, very good. Again, especially in a, a humid kind of tropical climate. I do think that this could be every day. It, it just evokes more of an autumn feel, kind of brisk air. But I think that this could work for every day. This could easily transfer from day to night. That pine resin, I'm telling you, it's like you're locked in a, a cedar treasure chest box and you're not complaining about it because it's cozy, it's warm, it's fall outside. You're maybe surrounded in leaves. Definitely getting all of the notes that are written in this one. And I think this might be the only one where I really do and where you can kind of smell them developing as time goes on. And it really, just like the other ones, all tell a story. This one is like the most, you know, sit in grandpa's lap and, and he actually is wearing this and you smell it and he's telling you a story on his old rocking chair that he built. So if I described you or somebody you know, or if that sounds appealing to you, then I definitely suggest throwing Greylock into your sample options. Next one we're going to talk about is Añoranza. This is actually the latest one they came out with. I just got the sample for this one a month or two ago, I think. Let me tell you the notes. Mint leaves, jasmine, mariposa, and rum. This is supposed to evoke, and it was developed with the inspiration of Cuba and Havana. And first spray with this, florals. This is rich, not white, not mild florals, but rich, kind of tropical, bright colored floral blast of jasmine. And the jasmine is what sticks through this one the entire time it's on your skin, the entire time it develops. The levels of the strength of the jasmine kind of ebb and flow, but one thing that was a constant in this fragrance that I noticed was jasmine. So if you're a fan of jasmine, I'm pretty sure that you might really love this one. You get the hints of mint as well, and it's almost like a, like a mojito, like if they were to infuse a mojito with 
some jasmine flower, or you're to be sipping on a mojito next to a giant jasmine bush, looking out into the streets of Havana, then that to me really is what this fragrance smells like. So they did a great, great job with that. Now, Terry Mugler has a, a men's fragrance called Pure Havan that is supposed to also be based on Havana and Cuba. And that is one of my absolute favorite men's fragrances. It's absolutely delicious. But to me, the, the Pure Havan by Thierry Mugler, that is so good for from a men's perspective. So this one does lend on the spectrum of female when it comes to feminine versus masculine fragrance. I would definitely put this under a more feminine. But that being said, if, if you want something, I just thought I'd mention from uh, the male side of fragrance that's just so good, then you might want to look into Pure Havan by Thierry Mugler. But back to this one, I really don't with any of them, which is another reason why I love Fleur, but you don't get any kind of synthetic feel from, from any of these scents, from any of these notes. There's no medicinal, there's no kind of screechy, questionable, you know, overly alcohol-based back notes or anything like that that you get. This really does smell like fresh jasmine and mint and flowers. And then as it develops a little bit further, you get that slight, slight sweet booziness from the rum. You know, at first, I would even say the first like one to three hours that I had this on, I was like, gosh, why do I feel like it's it's an air freshener? Like it's potpourri. I would prefer this in a candle over a fragrance I'm actually wearing on my body. But then it developed into this kind of sexy amber floral. I got amber in this in how it melted and developed on my skin. That's not even a note as you can see. So if you're a fan of jasmine, of amber, of mintiness, of a sexy feminine floral, if you wear a lot of magenta or deep purple, because those are the kinds of colors that to me, when I smell it, that's kind of the, the feelings that come up is magenta, deep purple outside, drinking a mojito next to a jasmine bush, then you'd probably really, really like this fragrance. This would be great for a tropical vacation, maybe the nights where you go out to dinner somewhere where you're sitting outside. And the longevity is decent, about five hours that I smelt this on my skin. And after those first two to three hours is when it got really fresh and comfy. And I could tell that that I liked what it was developing into because I found I kept wanting to to smell my arm when I would get little whips here and there and be like, oh, wait, I, I, I really like how that's turning out. But it's sometimes you just wish that that's how it was the whole time. If you want something feminine, but not really girly, more, more of a confident kind of sensual feminine without much sweetness, because I would say that none of their fragrances so far, are anything I would describe as a gourmand or sweet fragrance, but this has that kind of sticky rum jasmine feel to it so if all of that sounds like your style then añoranza might be your fragrance of choice from fleur so the next one we are going to review and talk about is amaline let's give her a little spritz mm. okay so this one's a surprise one for me because if you can't tell by uh i mean this just looks really pink and floral and girly and bright doesn't it but i love this fragrance. And this was actually in the running when I was trying to decide which bottle to get because I didn't want to get two at the same time. Uh, it was between this and Sandara. And they're very, very different fragrances. Let me tell you the notes for this one. For Amaline, it's rose, pink peppercorn, Italian bergamot, and patchouli. All of those notes, I just happen to know in other fragrances, develop really well on my skin. But it's interesting because I wouldn't have chosen this purely based on the representation that they have for it, which is pink and rosy. I don't like pink. I'm not a big pink rosy person, but this smells clean and feminine and it's a, a soft floral, not powdery because I'm also not a big fan of powdery, but it's just beautiful. And if you have ever smelled Mon Guerlain, Guerlain, I actually own that. I got the bottle because I smelled a sample of that and I thought it was just gorgeous. But that one develops, I don't like how it develops it all on my skin. And I think it's the lavender note that that one has. Amaline is everything that I wanted Mon Guerlain to be, but that it kind of failed to develop as on my skin. This fragrance gives me the feeling that I thought Mon Guerlain had evoked when I smelled it 
at the first time around when I smelt it on paper, when I first kind of had a small sample on my skin, who would wear this? Somebody who I think is sincerely kind and sweet and well-mannered and maybe somebody with very good posture. I will say this one also just tells a whole storyline because it really develops and ebbs and flows and changes as time goes on. Amelene has some good staying power on my skin. It lasts over eight hours and I only love it more and more as it continues to develop. Five minutes in, it to me started to get a little soapy, which I wasn't really expecting, and also slightly powdery and slightly almost more floral. So I was starting to think, oh, am I going to like how this continues to develop? Because all of those things I'm typically not a big fan of with the fragrance that I choose to wear. But then time went on, and after two hours, it turns into this soft, not so powdery anymore, but just like a soft aquatic with a rose water essence. The words that I would think of when I continue just to smell this on my skin are serene and comforting and nurturing. And oddly enough, I get a hint, if you're familiar with Bulgari Omnia, I get a hint of that in this as it continues to develop. But without the screechiness that that has, it's a really, really mild kind of backdrop hint. So if you are a fan of Bulgari Omnia Crystalline, and if you want something that also has a little bit more of a, a feminine edge to it, maybe some more florals, if you like rose, and this is a very soft, very natural rose, and that's why I think it's more like a rose water, which I always have in my kitchen. Uh, I know people use it as, as like beauty stuff now, but in Middle Eastern cooking, it's used in a lot of syrups and desserts, and, and I just love the scent of it and the flavor of it. After about eight hours, as soft as this was, it was a very close to skin scent that somebody could probably only smell if you walked by really close to them or if they were up close to you. But I did get this aquatic kind of mild amber fragrance coming from it. And again, just like I mentioned before, there is no amber in this, but the perfumer that created this perfume, I think it's a true masterpiece. I would say um, not to let how it's depicted, because I believe on the page with the playlist, it's a lot of kind of French songs, like you would think pastel wearing, pink wearing, very proper, very French kind of cultured feminine vibe from this. But all in all, this is just a delicious feminine fragrance. And, you know, in a weird way, I think that a guy could actually maybe pull this off. I haven't sprayed it on any of my friends to test this theory, but I don't know. In a weird way, I think that this might work on a guy. Now, as for the age range for who I think that this fragrance might be best for, I think this could work for somebody in their early 20s. And this might be the only one that I could say would would safely work and seem authentic on a girl who might be 20, between 20, 24. This is definitely great for 26, 27 and up. Seriously, even up to like your great, great grandmother. I think it's just, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I would only hope that this develops on everybody's skin as beautifully as it did on mine. This will definitely be the next bottle that I get because every time where I'm like, mm, did I really like it? I try the sample again and I just, I'm like, yep, I love this fragrance. I think this would be safe for an office setting. It's inoffensive. It's very light. And this would be a great go-to everyday fragrance. So if that sounds like something up your alley, then definitely make sure to throw this in your sample pack of three once you go to Fleur.com. And finally, for the last fragrance, which is actually not their newest fragrance, but it is their uh, second to newest fragrance. I don't have that sheet for it, but it is SC59. And this fragrance was actually created with the surfing culture and surf clubs in California of the, I believe, 50s and 60s in mind. It was actually created by a woman perfumer who is also a surfer. So I'll just pull out an index card to spray this. Oh, I don't, it's not that I don't like this one. First blast, it's sharp, it's citrusy, it's lemony, and all I get is cool water for women. If anybody has ever smelled that, the men's one was super popular in the 90s. I think that was my first men's cologne I ever smelled, and I was like, why do I like this? I must have been like 10 or 11. Why do I like this so much? This smells 
delicious. Eventually, I ended up getting cool water for women. Yep. And it's developing into it almost immediately. That is all I get here. It's aquatic. It reminds me of the vibrant blue cool water for women bottle. In a weird way, it's like I get this mix of of kind of like rubbing alcohol scent with it, which which could fade off. That could be just, you know, from something initial that they use. So this could easily be unisex. I think it falls into a, a straight up unisex spectrum. It almost reminds me of like a men's like axe type body spray if it was in in some kind of like fresh ocean version of that spray. As it develops, there is a slight, I get a slight, slight hint of mintiness, but there's no saltiness with this, no creaminess. It's pure aquatic, pure surf clubs, but not in the same way like you don't get, you know, it's not supposed to be the whole beach experience. Like some fragrances might throw in some some coconut or some saltiness to, to get like the sunscreen factor and all these these beachy aspects if that was their theme. Did I even tell you guys the notes? The notes for this are mint, lemon zest, orange flower, and amber. I don't get any amber with this, which is so funny because I got it with a couple others that didn't have amber in them. And what I did notice with this is after a couple of hours, I mean, that that citrusy zestiness does not go away. But after a couple of hours, it almost turned into, on my skin anyway, it almost turned into like like a bitter lemon, almost like it went from smelling like the zest of the lemon to the, the pith, the white part. And as it developed, there was a little bit of, tiny bit of saltiness that kind of started popping up. It, and, and you know what it smelled like to me? It smelled like you go to the beach and you have your beach towel and it's the towel you used to lay on, but also dry yourself off with. So it's kind of damp. It's kind of sandy. And you get back in your car and you happen to have one of those lemon air fresheners in your car and you drive home and you forget your sandy beach towel in your car with that lemon air freshener And then you remember and you, you know, maybe there's an empty bottle of cool water for women that you didn't know about, like under the seat. And when you open that car door, whatever that smell is like, if you can imagine, that is what this developed into on my skin. This didn't last super long. It lasted maybe four or five hours max. Again, it's not not bad if you like cool water for women, if you like really aquatic fragrances, a really, really popular aquatic kind of, well, citrusy fragrance that, that everybody knows of and, and probably owns is Light Blue by Dolce & Gabbana. If you like that fragrance, then you might be more likely to like this one. I think this one is a little bit more in your face than that one. I think that one has an aspect that's a little bit softer, maybe. I could see how this one might develop on your skin in a little bit of a more favorable way. But for me, it just it just didn't play off well with my chemistry, I guess. But yeah, that was SC59 from Fleur. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to click the thumbs up if you did to let me know below which one sounds best to you. And if you end up ordering any, I will leave a link in the description and the pinned comments. Again, I'm not affiliated with them at all. That's just something that they give all customers to share with their friends. And we're family here at Cat Lady Fitness. So I am sharing that with you. Also, please leave me any requests for a fragrance review that you may want in the future, whether it's a specific single fragrance, which would be great because that would be a fast video to make or suggestions of other ones you may like based on your current favorite fragrance or gift giving ideas or whatever it may be. Of course, go ahead and click that subscribe button as well as the little bell icon below if you want to become a part of the Cat Lady Fitness family because we do put out videos every cat or day, which are often pertaining to cat stuff, kitty nutrition, cat care, as well as things for humans like workouts, uh, stress management tips, and whatever I feel like posting. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure to like our page, Cat Lady Fitness. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and for sticking with me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.